Yes, welcome to our uh, April subscription monthly video, Tasting with Friends. And not only is it a friend I have with me today, but it's also my beloved bar manager that has been working with us for... Eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. That's pretty, pretty long. But uh, without Stephanie, our bar would be miserable. And uh, she's the one who is calling the shots there now and uh, training all the staff and making sure that every customer gets a good experience. Yes. So you're always there. I'm always there. <laughs> every day. Every day. Not always. No. What did you do before you came to us? I was working for another coffee company. Oh. So I've been making coffee in a few places before I ended up working for you. Yeah. But you used to come as a customer when I yes. worked at Stockfords. Yeah. yeah. I remember her mom and her sisters and yeah, yeah, yeah. they still come to our store yeah. every day. Every day. Yeah. And drink cappuccinos and coffee. And yeah. They're the first to uh, let me know if something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're quite honest. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Stephanie. Yeah. Should we just uh, start tasting coffees? Yeah. I'm ready. You're ready. So for April is a difficult month yeah. because uh, most of the coffees we buy are harvested between you know, Ethiopia and uh, Kenya, they harvest in December. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have El Salvador and uh, Marisabel, and Mo uh, like Gilberto and Marisabel and Moises in, in Honduras. They harvest January, February, March, sometimes April, but normally not. And then Nascimento, uh, which is north of Honduras, he starts harvesting in January, but harvests until July. Yeah. And then uh, Mexico is also January, February. So most of our coffees are, you know, harvested at the beginning of the year, yeah. which means in April, it's kind of the end of last year's coffees mm -hmm. before we start getting new ones. So normally the first ones to arrive are Kenyans. They normally come in May or June. Ethiopians can come May, June, July, August, September, depending on logistics. And then uh, Marisa Ben and Moises normally can send us coffee quite fast. So june as well so we're kind of at the end of all our coffees but that doesn't mean the coffee tastes bad because we have some tricks you know we have a cold storage in our roastery uh, we vacuum pack the coffees we have made sure all the farmers we buy from uh, dry on raised beds yeah. under shades mm -hmm. they also soak the coffee after the washing process which means the shelf life the combination of all of these things means the shelf life is much longer so we're actually going to taste some coffees uh, that was harvested in March uh, and also June last year. Yeah. Let's start with the June one. And this is a coffee that you've probably been following for many years. Yeah. Uh, from Nascimento, Hodnil. He's the one, first farmer we started kind of working directly with in uh, Santa Barbara in Honduras. And uh, we've been buying his coffee since 2008. But I went there the first time, I think 2009, mm -hmm. and 2010 was kind of our first direct sales, which is probably when you started. When I started, yeah. yeah. So that means you've been following this progress yeah. from the first coffee until now. It's a lot has changed, I guess. It has. Uh, I've noticed that like the quality on the green beans has like progressed a lot. Yeah. Um, when I when we brew the coffees in the bar, like both us colleagues working behind the bar, but also a lot of guests, they have noticed like the past past two, three, four years that it's even more juicy and um, like a lot more flavors yeah. in the cup. It's a bit cleaner, I think. Cleaner as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, the biggest uh, change we did on this farm, uh, together with Hobnil, of course, I actually gave him kind of an ultimatum. Yeah. <laughs> Because he was, he was picking and processing his coffee and then he didn't dry his own coffee so he would just send it to the exporter mm. and they would dry it on their patios. Yeah. The patios are not so clean. I mean, their patios are clean but a patio by definition is not very clean. No. It lays on the ground. So I kind of gave him an ultimatum. I think it was maybe three or four years ago where I, I told him, you know, if you are not able to build some raised beds and dry the coffee on raised beds, then we probably won't be able to continue buying the coffee because 
we want a better standard. And we actually gave him some money to build some race beds. And then when I came back a couple of months later, he had built much more beds than I expected and started drying all his coffees on them yeah. and started yeah. sorting out defects. Yeah. And so good. So for me, this is one of the uh, most well-processed coffees we buy, maybe from him and Marius Abella Moises, I yeah. think, are yeah. the coffees that are... You can also see it during roasting that it's very little Quakers and it's very easy to roast, yeah. very even. Should we taste? I'm ready. Juice in a cup. Mm. What kind of juice? Fruit juice. Fruit juice. <laughs> it is very fruity. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things we do on this farm mm. is we separate the picking dates because he starts harvesting in January. He harvests in February, March, April, May, June. Yeah. Because his farm is on a very steep hill. We talked about this last year as well in uh, the subscription video. But uh, So we separate the harvest dates and also the variety. He has mm. Bourbon. Pacas and SL28 yeah. and also Katimor, but we don't normally buy that. Um, this is a Pacas variety and it's from the top of the farm. Yeah. Uh, it's picked in June, mm -hmm. late June. Mm -hmm. It's actually the last picking we managed to buy. Yeah. And he had some later pickings, but the quantities are so small. So at some point you just got to say, okay, now we have to ship the coffee. Yeah. But uh, normally the, the later pickings because of the higher altitude, slower maturation, you develop more flavor. Mm. That's why it's so fruity. Mm. What kind of fruit do we get here? Like I can taste a lot of stone fruits. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Like a stone fruit sweetness. And when it, especially when it cools down, it becomes really smooth in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So clean. Yeah, so clean. Um, the reason why it has more flavor, yeah. you know, during the rain season, uh, the coffee trees flower more or less at the same time. Mm -hmm. If it's 1500 meters or 1800 meters on this yeah. farm, they flower at the same time. But at 1500 meters, you start picking in January and February. Mm. At 1800 meters, you start picking in April. So that means the cherries are, have more time on the tree, which means they can get more of the fatty acids that mm. make the flavor. Mm. So longer maturation and so on. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of shade trees there because it's always cloudy. Except when I visit, it's always sunny. <laughs> I've been there so many times and it's always a beautiful view. There's a little lake down at the bottom of the mountain yeah. and you, you just see the whole valley. Uh, every afternoon you get like a little mist mm -hmm. uh, from, from, the, from the lake. And it's quite difficult to get up to this farm. It's very steep. Yeah. So Pacas variety from Hobni, Nascimento, mm -hmm. will go out to all our subscribers. Yeah for a treat yes so good and then for the people who subscribe to two and three bags we sent this coffee out before but it's really good so i'm sending it out again this is the java from marisa bella moises mm. so this is a java variety um, it's actually a ethiopian variety that was brought to indonesia java back to you know africa and then over to Bolivia, and then Moises got the seeds from a guy in Bolivia while he was visiting in El Salvador, brought it back to Honduras, planted it south of Honduras. So Hobnil is north in Santa Barbara, and Marisabella Moises is south in Marcala, very close to the El Salvadoran mm -hmm. border. So the climates are very different. Uh, one thing they have in common, it is very cold. So sometimes they have frost on the farm, really? which they did actually last year. Yeah. Um, and that means sometimes no harvest, but uh, in best case, you know, you see the tip of the branch is a little black, mm. but it didn't really affect, last year it didn't really affect the harvest at all. Should we taste the java variety? This is one of my favorites at the moment. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. You know, on Why? your nose, yeah, but, but when, you, when you smell it, it's like um, the same aroma as an oolong tea. Oolong tea, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you drink it, it's like if you have had like the matcha yeah. with milk chocolate. Green milk chocolates, the yes. matcha milk chocolates. Yes. I totally agree. It's like a silky smooth 
mouthfeel and it's also still so juicy and clean. But you're right, it does smell like uh, yeah. low long teas. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I haven't noticed that. And it's so fun when we brew this for our guests in the bar. It's so fun to see their reactions. Yeah. Because many, many people like, oh, green tea and milk chocolate. And they're a little bit like... Yeah, it doesn't sound like the no, best coffee. No, no. But when they <laughs> drink it, so many buy themselves a bag to brew back home. Yeah. I really enjoy drinking this coffee. And I think, you know, coffee people tend to only want floral and fruity coffees like Ethiopian, Kenyan, Geishas, and so on. Yeah. This is a refreshing kind of contrast to that. Yeah. It's... It still has some kind of fruitiness, but uh, it's more like a caramelly, milk yes. chocolatey, yes. kind of a more sweet and mellow coffee. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, what really brings out uh, the characteristics here is the mouthfeel. It's really kind of rich and yeah. not heavy, but it's kind of filling. Uh, Would you say way. that this is an, a balanced coffee? Well, I will Did say coffee? regardless of coffee, mm -hmm. it depends on how you brew it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can have a very high acidity coffee like a Kenyan and still have it balanced if you extract it well. Yeah. But um, I understand what you mean with balanced. Like the acidity is not too high. No. The sweetness is there. It's not too bitter. You know, it has kind of a, mm -hmm. what do you call it? The mid, mid tones. Yeah, yeah. Like I really enjoy this. Mm. And what always happens with this coffee is that when we get it, it's a little green. Yeah. And then the longer we kind of have it and it starts to open up and it's the same happened this year. I think mm -hmm. last time we sent it out, it was much more of a kind of a just caramel and milk chocolate. Now it's more kind of floral, a little bit more of that tea flavors, a mm -hmm. uh, little bit more fruit flavors and so on. We've also, you know, been roasting this for a couple of months now. So we have been able to tweak the roast slightly yeah. as well. Yeah. It's very difficult to roast this coffee because the beans are a little yes. oblong. Okay. So that means the tips that are kind of thinner mm. gets more roasted than the middle. That's so it's the same with the geisha. It's always kind of a compromise, you know, how, how you roast it. Yeah. Either it's slightly green inside or it's, you know, slightly roasted. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, with our new roaster, the Loring, it's easier because it's a hot air roaster. So it's better now than it was a year ago, I think. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I agree on that. So those are the main coffees this month that we'll send out to all people who subscribe to one and two bags. Yeah. You guys are so lucky um, to get some good treats. I have a surprise for the third bag. Yeah. We also sent that out already once, but uh, it's the Karinga from Kenya. <laughs> oh. how, how, you know, you've been serving that in the bar for yes. a while now. What do people say? There's so many people who come back who have purchased the bag, who says, is there any more? Yeah. Can you work your magic and find a new bag for me? Yeah. Because it's so like, I would say, like in Norwegian, I call it Husholdning. Soft is like a juice, like it's so rich in red, dark berries yeah. and this cherry flavor. I think it's called so forest good. berries or yes. something in, in uh, yes. it's just like a mix of blackberries, yeah, it's so uh, good. black currants, raspberries, strawberry, yeah. you know, juice, juice, juice. The juice. reactions of my guests drinking it in my bar, it's been like, they're just stop. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, it's a really nice coffee. Yeah. And uh, we actually managed to buy a little bit more this year, so we'll have a small lot of in 2019 as well of the Karinga coffee oh, all right so that's the three coffees we're going to send out yeah. uh, in April and um, if you want to subscribe to our coffees how, how do you do that you go into our website and sign up yes we have two ways of subscribing we have the recurring yeah which basically means it's an ongoing subscription mm -hmm. you can pause it anytime you like and you can also stop it anytime you like and then you have a gift subscription that you can either give it to yourself or to a friend where you kind of prepay for three, one to three bags, uh, three to 12 months, yeah, depending on what you want. Gift. And uh, we normally try to send out the best coffees we have. I am the one who chooses the coffees. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when we have very small quantities of uh, certain coffee from farms, you know, it could be a new variety we planted. Mm -hmm. Like last month, mm -hmm. we sent out the Bourbon. 
we prefer to send out to our to our subscribers because yeah. that means a lot of people get to taste it and we know how much volume uh, we need mm. in order to do that so it's a little bit more predictable for us so if you want to get these kind of exclusive coffees the only way to do that is to subscribe yeah or if we have any leftovers this is the girl you need to talk to yeah because she's the one in charge yeah but sometimes you get like the leftovers from the subscription yeah day. in the bar yeah yeah so you can buy them in our store yeah yes all right how would you brew these coffees would you brew them on the same device or like back home we're a big family uh so we have a wolf of precision yeah automatic mm. filter brew yes and it tastes so good. Yeah, that's the way I brew coffee yeah, at home as well. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Would you dose them differently? Like, uh, I think for me at least, the Java, I would prefer a slightly higher dose, maybe. Yeah. Me as well. Yeah. And the Pacas, what do you think? I would go for like one liter. I would go for, I would do 65 grams yeah. per liter. On both of them or? No, maybe maybe a little bit more on the Java. On the Java, yeah. yeah. So to really get that richness. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, I would, you know, if you get a bag of this, you should experiment, especially if you're just brewing like on an air press. Yeah. Experiment with the dosage a little bit. Yeah. And uh, the grind setting, because you brew this in a bar, how does this grind? Do we have to go finer on the Java or, or coarser or? Like for these two, I like for the Java, I go a little bit finer than the Pacas. Yeah, I probably would agree on that. Yeah. The, the Pacas is a little bit easier to extract. Yes. Longer maturation. Yeah. More stuff to extract. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for uh, this month's uh, video. Do you have anything more you want to say or? No, I'm just uh, happy I could be a part of this and uh, drink some coffee with you. Yeah, it's not very often we get no, to do that. No. <laughs> Well, having said that, let's yeah. finish the cups. Yes, thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank Ciao. So what are you doing with the How are you doing? Yes, I'm good. It looks good for me. Good, good.